What type of account do you recommend for Baby Step 1's emergency fund, William says on Twitter. You can follow me there, at Dave Ramsey, and anytime you'd like. The, um, I, you know, Baby Step 1 is $1,000 saved, William. It really doesn't matter what kind of account you put it in. It's not going to make any money. If, if there's no such thing as a 10% account on $1,000. I mean, it, it's you can put it in a money market if you want, and you're going to make 1%. And so we're talking about $10 a year. So I don't care if you even put it in an account is my point. I don't care if you keep it in the sock drawer. I just want you to have $1,000 set aside that you don't touch for anything. Now, if you want to put it in an account, it just be a little money market type account at your local bank where you can get to it if you have a, an emergency. The downside of keeping it on the sock drawer is you might think the pizza man at the front door is an emergency, and he's not. So you need to be careful about how you define emergency. This is just to be used for emergencies. One lady took hers and put it into a frame. She bought a cheap frame down at Walmart and wrote under the uh, wrote across the bottom of the frame, uh, in case of emergency, break glass. <laughs> <laughs> and then hung the thousand dollars behind her coats and her closets. It's because I mean you're not going to make any money on it, William. I mean it's just it's there just to be used only for emergencies, only for emergencies. That's all it's for. And um, you know your little thousand dollar account. Hopefully now when you grow the account up in baby step three to a full three to six months of expenses, then I'm going to keep it in a money market account. Even at that point, you're not making any money. Let's say you've got $15,000 in there at 1%. It's 150 bucks. I mean, it's no money at all. You're not making any money on this account. So the emergency fund is not about making money. It's insurance to keep you from cashing out or going into debt, cashing out stuff you shouldn't have to cash out. And so insurance doesn't make you money. Insurance costs you money to protect things that make you money. And that's the best way to look at your emergency fund. It's not an investment. It's insurance. And that helps you if you do it that way. So, I, you know, when I had, when I finally got $1,000 and then I finally got $10,000 and, and, and it was all I had, I was all concerned that it needed to work really hard. And, and you know, I started realizing that it's not going to work hard when it's in an emergency fund. And so then I want to start investing my emergency fund. Well, that's a dumb idea because by definition, an emergency fund needs to be easy to access, what we financial people call liquid. And so you have to set that aside. You just set this money aside and say it is not for, it's not the money that's going to make me money. It's the money that's going to protect the stuff that makes me money. I don't have to, I, I can, you know, when you've got a big emergency fund, you can carry a higher deductible on your insurance, which causes you what? have lower premiums. When you've got a bigger emergency fund, you know, you, you don't have to tap out your 401k or borrow on your 401k if your car's transmission goes out. And so you get to leave alone the things that are making you money and you get to increase your, decrease some of your costs like insurance and those kinds of things. You don't buy insurance on everything that turns around because you've got fifteen or $20,000 set aside for your rainy day fund. One lady called it her GOK fund, my God only knows fund. And um, I don't care what you call it, but that, that's how you do it. So good question, William. I appreciate you bringing that up. So baby step one is $1,000 saved. Two is pay off all your debts except your home using the debt snowball where you list your debts, smallest to largest, and pay them off in that order with great focused intensity. Once you're out of debt, then you go accept your home, then you go back to the $1,000 account in baby step three and raise it up to a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. You need to run like your hair's on fire until you get those three steps done. You need to be in a panic until you get those three steps done. Because if you have $15,000 or $10,000 or whatever three to six months of expenses in your life represents in cash in the bank, and you don't have any payments but a house payment. Just think about your life right now. How would that feel? No payments but a house payment and fifteen or 20000 or $10,000 laying there. You're not even there yet, and you just started breathing better. Just thinking about it, you took a deep breath and a sigh. It's exactly what you did after I said that. 
when you don't have any payments but a house payment and you have your emergency fund, that's a foundational place to begin to build wealth. That's a foundational place to begin to, to your level of outrageous generosity. But until you get there, you're just scrapping and clawing like a rat in a wheel, man. And so you have to break the cycle. You have to flip this thing on its head and make it behave. You've got to get so fired up and wired up that your broke friends think you've lost your mind. If people aren't making fun of you, you're probably not on track. Because people are stupid. People are broke. They said and I heard as the dumbest financial planning firm out there. Because if you look around, 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. $1.4 trillion in stupid student loan debt. Another trillion in stupid credit card debt. Car fleeces. 78% of the cars that leave a new car lot are fleeced right now. And most of the rest of them are financed. Stupid is on parade all around you. It's a clown show financially. You want to be that? I don't want to be that. That's where I, that's where, when I hit bottom, I mean, I, I didn't hit bottom. I completely splatted because I was stupid with steroids, man. I know what stupid looks like. I looked that boy in the mirror. I know who, who he is. He was wrapped around my neck. And so you don't want to live like that. But your foundational stuff is to at least get rid of your debt, not counting your home, and at least get you a rainy day fund. And you don't need to be doing any investing until you get that crap straightened out. It's time to put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants. This is grown-up talk here. You're not in Congress. You have to live on less than you make. You have to apply yourself to these situations. You have to look in the mirror and look at each other as a married couple or as a single. Look in the mirror and say, no, we're not going on vacation. We're broke. We have two car payments and a credit card loan, credit card debt and a student loan that's been around so long we think it's a pet. No, we're not going out to eat. We're not going to strut around acting like we're something we're not. Tom Stanley, who wrote the book Millionaire Next Door, his last book he wrote before he was killed in a car accident a couple of years ago was Stop Acting Rich. It was the title of the book. It's a great title. Stop Acting Rich. That's what it comes down to. Quit acting like you're something you're not. You don't have any stinking money. Act like a broke person. Why? It's easy. You're a broke person. You make 60 or 90 or 160 a year and you got nothing. Nothing. No money. Payments coming out your ears, out of control, strutting around, acting like you're something. In Texas, they call that big hat, no cattle. Stop it. It's time to lay these basic steps out and lay into them and say, that's it. I'm tired of being broke. I work too stinking hard to be this broke. I put up with too much crap to be this broke. And ain't anybody going to fix it in this election cycle. The only people's going to fix it's in your house. The White House isn't going to do nothing. It's your house that's got to do it. The people in your house got to start behaving. And then you can turn your money around. But it, it's, an act, it's, a, it's an act of adulthood. Adults devise a plan and follow it. Children do what feels good. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show. You are not a victim. You're not a victim of big corporations. You're not a victim of Wall Street. You're not a victim of capitalism. You're not a victim of wealth inequality. You're not a victim of racism. You're not a victim.